have you ever felt? Are you listening? Check it out, it's your boy Debo the Don. You're watching Debo the Don TV. When you have a moment, like, share, subscribe. Right, so yeah, you, we talk about the, um, as far as like the cultural and social disconnect. Um, you being one of the Lowrider Magazine, I call uh, Rita alumni. How was it that you were able to connect to a larger uh, Organizations such as Finest Creation Bike Club. It's real easy. And this is what I tell everybody today. All you gotta do is reach out and go to the right places. You know, if you wanna join an organization, show who you are first. You can have this bike, this car, whatever. Go to a car show. Make the efforts. You know, my first out of town car show was Miami. Miami to me was like my second home at the time because I loved it. I loved the way they represented at the time. They were talking about late 90s. 99-ish, 2000, it's a good time for low riding stuff. And I think that those guys also put a lot of stuff on the map for that time period. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to get outside of that even. Went to Phoenix, Arizona, uh, you know, I was taking trips to Las Vegas, taking trips everywhere. So then I was able to like learn and be around the people I looked up to, quote unquote, through Low Rider Magazine, paying attention to the news, so to speak. Because Low Rider Magazine to us is a newspaper. You know, it's what was the, it was the whole grill. All the information and all the input and the people that you wanted to be around. So I think it's real simple. I think a lot of people get fearful of their names because yeah. of the plaques and the representation behind those plaques. Yes. But a lot of those people, like, really good people. They're real regular, like us. Yes. They're not uh, above and beyond God or nothing. They're just they're there, you know what I'm saying? And they want to give the young, the young crowd a bigger support by putting them in better places. Yes. Um, and that's what happened to me. In essence, I had two ways to go, right? I always tell my son this. You got positives and then you got negatives, mm -hmm. right? You're looking for a cure in your life, right? You're looking for something better. Always go positive, never go down negative. Even if the times are rough, even if your your attitude towards something is rough, go down positive. Positive for me, right here. Okay. You know what I mean? That's the positivity that kept me motivated, kept me running down the track. You know what I mean? And I had no other choice because my parents, you know, they brought me up in a way that said, hey, look, use your energy in a positive way. Don't hurt nobody, don't take from nobody. Just do what you need to do to make yourself feel better. And to me, it was low riding. And I enjoyed every minute of it, every second of it. It was like a movie. Every time I went on the street, every time I joined my homies, every time I, it was like a movie. So that's why I tell young guys today, if you guys are getting into low riding, make sure that you have the right positive attitude towards this thing. Because what we do out here, when we put the, 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 the bricks down the pavement, you got to follow them same bricks. The same bricks that we already laid, they're there, man. Just keep them straight and just keep going down the road. You don't need to go down negative and gang bang and G'd up and this, that, and set this and trip that. Ain't nobody set tripping, ain't nobody G bang. You know what I'm saying? Like, we out here on some family tip, on some real low rider life. And for a lot of you guys, you got to take yourself down that road, low rider life, not G bang and set tripping. So, you know, that's the positivity. You know, the painting, the teaching, everything that I've been doing is for the game, not for me. Yeah. For me, I'm already, to me, I've already reached success, the level that I need to be. Now I want to share and say, hey, I'm a youngster, you know, you want to learn this? You want to know, to, you want to know how to put this together? You want to know how to paint the picture? Here it is. I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to give it back. And it's funny how. In the saddest times, I was able to embrace a lot of the art, more so then, yes. you know, because you got to find a place to put your mind sometimes, and that to me was everything, you know, just finding a place where I could dedicate it to, to develop this thing I call uh, my style. Now, uh, I want to ask you, being a, uh, a Bronx native, you know, New York City's known for graffiti, and when I look at graphics on lowriders that remind me of graffiti. You know, yeah. most guys who are able to transcend these these concepts and incorporate all these different layers of patterns with candies and pearls, those guys for the most part had to have had a graffiti background. Now you coming from New York and upgrading your style because I watched you evolve. Um, there weren't really many people in New York that could paint 
on this level. Really, the only one in my eyes was was Marvin from Jurassic, and I always give him his props. How did you graduate to this level? Because you went from being in a bike club <laughs> to being in a, organi- a, a a massive organization like Uso to becoming your own brand with your own name and and building something that has put you on a map where now you're like a immortal, you're timeless. That's a tough one. Because at the times of need, you find yourself in a place that's more creative than others. Okay. You know, and I have to find a space where I could actually set those emotions up. I had something to prove, I figured that out, you know, over time. I felt like I wasn't in control of my projects. And what I was trying to achieve and the way I wanted to see my cars and the way I wanted to see things. And I felt like if I was happy enough with it, other people could be happy enough with it too. Um, but again, it was brand new still. So like, all this subjective. Just like music, it's all synonymous. You know, you might want to listen to this guy and not listen to that guy. That's kind of like how I have to approach this. A lot of people love looking at it and going, wow, it's beautiful. There's a lot of people don't, which I can appreciate that as well. Um, not everybody has a vision for color. The color combination and line work and this and that. So I think that that has a lot to do with it. But I did find myself in a dark place in my life. You will notice now, you know, I was in a dark place in my life. So I had to find the light. And the generated light was low lighting, of course. I had to go back that far and say, I gotta find it. I gotta find the light inside of me to do something great with my time. Yes. Can I, can I, uh, can I attest my skill to someone? I'd say I attest my skill to some of the greats that I was inspired by. And they were mostly other inspired. Um, Danny D. being one of them. Very, very inspired by that man. I think he's created images that only he can create and that only I can be inspired by. <laughs> you know, with all the respect in the world, because I never try to be. But I will say, his team, his people have always put out a very positive energy for the art and the colors and the combinations and the styling. I said, how can I use this to my best ability without looking like the copycat type artist? Because there's a lot of that too. And I dissected piece by piece, paint job by paint job. Every paint job that was my favorite, I dissected. It was like, like, like with a magnifying glass, like, how can I do this? Um, bugs, it's funny because when I first started doing this, I wasn't very good at it. To be honest, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the best. I wasn't the guy to look at. But I said to my wife, I said, you know, we gotta go back to LA. This is me pre-returning back from LA when you and I had talked when I was out there. Yes. And I and I flew back and I came back out my family and went back on the jet a month later. Went back out there and I wanted to take a class. And it was the first of its kind at the time, Bugs and another artist named Armando was teaching it. And I said, let me put my hand to this really for real and see what I could do. And uh, and Bo said, hey, it's gonna take you time. You know, he told me like a son, you know, he says, you gotta, you gotta do it, you gotta, I know you are. You know, but you've got to like focus on the things and you're always gonna get better and never stop learning. He always says that, never stop learning because once you stop, you're dead. There's nothing else left. So I kept that with me, man. And from that year, let's see, that's, uh, that's 2014. And from that year on, I've been moving progressively, you know, just now I'm at the, I think, the top of my own level. You know, I do a lot of stuff for SEMA now, um, do stuff for prominent people that really enjoy my art and still have their cars and they sell them. They go to other prominent people and it just keeps on evolving. But um, what can I say? I mean, I, I just attested to everybody that was better than me, I think. You know, my, my skill is something that you got to practice, practice, practice. It isn't giving, giving, giving. You know, nothing's given in life. You know, if you really want something, you're gonna practice at it. Whether you're in a dark cave, or whether you're in the biggest, baddest shop in the world, you still gotta practice. Uh, and I've come from that. You know, I've come from the biggest and baddest and the dopest shops and the biggest, nicest places to some of the darkest places you've ever painted in, yes. <laughs> to be honest. Um, and, and I've been fortunate enough to meet great people, and I've also been fortunate enough to meet some pretty uh, interesting characters as well. Now let me ask you, what have been some of the biggest challenges you faced as being, uh, uh, I would say, a service provider painting cars? Because 
You know, you're, you're, you're taking somebody's dream and you're bringing in the fruition, but people don't understand the process can sometimes be a nightmare. Yeah. What has that been like for you? It's It's been horrendous. I think that um, from the start, I never thought it would be as bad as abuse because mm -hmm. I believe that there's a lot of owners and a lot of low riders that have more money than common sense. And I will stand that, that statement, you know. Um, back when I was low riding, young and coming up, we had to have common sense. We had to have common sense. Money, money was there, but we had to know what the hell we was doing. And I believe that there's more people that only understand it for the picture, not what goes behind the picture. There's a lot of foundation that goes into a paint job, a lot of patience. This is not perfect science. Nothing about this is perfect science. Nothing in any of these bottles is perfect science at any time of the day. And I think that's what everyone has to understand in the lowrider culture, in custom paint, in whatever you're doing, that this is not a perfect science. It takes artistry and experience to make these happen. And sometimes the most experienced person don't make it happen. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, um, I hope that people learn that this isn't a necessity to a lowrider. It's not. This is a luxury. You yeah. gotta create luxuries for your, for your image, for your style. It's like wearing a pair of sneakers, a pair of Tim's. You gotta have them. A little design paint job. That means that you're in the it crowd. You, you, you were chosen. You know, I don't I don't say that people choose me, I choose them. You know, I wanna choose you. You, not your car, not the customization of it, or you. And that's my goal and what I do with design. Like everybody else. They're gonna go and go like this. Oh yeah, what the style, how much, how much, how much. When somebody comes to me about how much something is, that's about the conversation. You really don't care about the art, you care about the price. So that's, you know, and I'd say, and it hasn't been all bad, I've had some good times and some bad times. The good times, I love the creation of this food. I love to stand back and look at them and go, wow, that's dope. Yes. That's a dope feeling, like when you see somebody really talking, Music's the same way, a little bit of beat, the type of beat, the uptone, the downtone, you know? It's all the same, but in paint it's different because everybody has a different style. Mm -hmm. So what I say is I am a compilation of different styles. I can I can mix master it how you want it, or I can mix master it another. So I mean with, with all of that, I'd say my customer experience has been on a 50-50 level. Yep. Alright, so I asked you previously, you know, what was uh, some of the more pleasurable experience or more uh, less pleasurable experience. But I want to ask you, you know, you ultimately becoming your own brand. Now, it's Lugos Familia. What was the difference between Lugos Familia versus the Lugos Brothers? Because Lugos Brothers represented the more uh, primitive times of low rider, low rider magazine. Lugo's Familia kind of represents the millennial generation, the lay it low, the Facebook, yeah. the Instagram, the instant access to information that you didn't have. Well, I'll tell you this much. Uh, Lugo Brothers was a collaboration of information and just learning process. Yes. I think I was trying to learn through somebody else how to low rider. How to be it? What what is life? What what's what's the life of low riding like? And I think um, everybody got to part ways in a certain kind of way to grow. Mm -hmm. And I think this was a moment of growth for me to actually expand and do this as my family. Uh, my family consists of my wife, my son. My son is the next generation. He's very important to me. Yeah. In this next generation, I think I think we all look at our sons or, or, or someone very close to us as the next generation. That that youth. And I think he's the one that's watching now. I think he's 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 the guy on the sideline looking at me like pops. You better put it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you better you better put down these bricks for this road because I need to ride it. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was the the inspiration for me. I just didn't know it until like later on. So things started really getting heated and, and just I had to make different types of moves for myself and my family to be a better person too because I think this better's you as a person because you learn how to move amongst other people in a certain kind of way as well. Um, and again, I think it's motivation. I think that like family should motivate you, not discourage you. Mm -hmm. And I think it was familiar to me. It was a newborn thing. It was newborn. It was brand new. Yes. I think it was like it was like a fresh revival of like what I was trying to do. 
I think that's what it was. For me, that's all it was. Yes. You know what I mean? I, I think that Lugos Familia now to me is more important because there is this new generation that I represent as well. Mm -hmm. Because I'm only 35, man. Yeah. I've been low riding 20 years of my life. Yeah. You know, I only I only tell you 20, but really, <laughs> it's probably over 20, you know? Yeah. I say 20 because that's the most relevant time frame that I have. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people look at me like, oh man, you was a kid, you was a young little boy. Like, how could you even understand the concepts of all this? Yes. Um, I always hashtag since 96 for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that was the first time I really got to see and envision what it's like to be a low rider, the lifestyle. Not the Dickies and the Chucks, not the, the fake bandana around your head because you don't represent no set, because we know who those people are, but the real life, the sacrifices, the pay the chrome bill before the phone bill, pay the, you know, <laughs> that kind of life. Nah, you know those, nah, those slogans are real, the, 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 the built not bought. Yeah, built not bought, that's another topic in itself, but I can tell you straight up, if you're not trying to build it, then don't try to buy it. Because at the end of the day, anything bought is fake. It's not yours. You don't represent it. You know what I mean? I don't care if it's, you know, I'm not saying like for Rolex, that's a different story, my man. That's a that's a luxury. That's a that's a, a lifestyle in itself. We're talking about real creative art, stuff that belongs to you. You bring a craftsman like me who puts in hands, sweat, blood, tears, make sure you pick the right guy and also make sure you're on the same level, understanding, because all of this thing that we do still to this day, still still to this day is all sacrifice. None of it comes easy, people. None of it. None of this thing that we're doing, I'm not out here to preach to nobody because I don't have all the answers. I have the answers of my journey. Yes. You know what I'm saying? What I've been through. But at the same time, it's just like me. A lot of guys go, yo, where's your ride? I'll tell you why my ride was never out. I'll tell you that straight up. Because I was too busy worrying about everybody else's goals, everybody else's things. And I couldn't, I can't. You know, I'm at the point now in my life where I gotta go, hey, if this is my client, then that's what I'm doing. If this is my client, that's what I'm doing. You can't make yourself so accessible to the whole world so you don't find yourself any time. Yes. You know, so now I'm at the point where um, I found myself a fun project to work on. Something great, something motivating. Something definitely that's got me in the mood of like old school, low riding mixed with the new school. Yes. And I think that with a lot of support from a lot of people, they've been saying, man, it's your time. You gotta do this. You gotta push yourself. Because if I don't push myself, there ain't nobody on the other side. So, I mean, at the end of the day, my line is Lugos Familia first, you know, that's it. It's number one to me. If it, if it doesn't push me or doesn't inspire me, then I don't do it. Now, besides your family uh, being one of your biggest inspirations, who were some of the people that were your, your, your biggest inspirations, low rider wise? Who were like OGs that you looked up to and admired their leadership? I'll tell you the first person I ever met was Kita Famuso. Keto was, Keto to me was like what a dad should be to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Uh, most definitely. I, I remember the first day I met him and it was crazy because it was almost like a movie. I didn't know this guy. I didn't know him for nothing. Mm -hmm. He was just this cool Samoan dude that was just like, so, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? With his little Chivo and shit and he showed you love. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, he did his Hawaiian love, you know what I mean? He gave you a hug and a kiss, yes. like, yeah, and then you question that shit. A lot of dudes wasn't, they wasn't yeah. uh, comfortable with that, but, you yeah. know, he was so gangster and OG with oh, it. Yeah. That's probably one of the only OGs you let kiss you, like oh, yeah. that. He cracked, he, he, he'll, he'll, he'll crack your melon real quick, like, boom! Like, you know what I'm saying? He oh, yeah, Keita like, had them hands. He yeah. will knock you out. Yeah, he's that dude, so, like, <laughs> you, you let him give you a hug and a kiss, then you... Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? You question that shit at first, like, it was so funny conversations in the elevator, bro. But I was like, yeah, for real. <laughs> you know, once it all kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Kind of, it kind of like molded together. It was dope. It was my first, honestly, it was my first um, look at marijuana usage. Hmm. Not to nobody on blast, but yes. you walk into that man's room, he was happy all the time. I always wondered why. <laughs> We were smoking the green, so for me it was it was all brand new. But I say he was one of my biggest inspirations. I, I love what his uh, his company represented, his people represented the time. I think Uso at, the, at that time was a different Uso. Yes. And I've always said that to everybody. Uso at that time was a different Uso. Mm. Uso meant something else, you know, at that time. Yeah. Um, at this point in time, I think it's uh, more clear to me why I belong as a person yes. in my life. So I think I'm always a Uso. Okay. 
for the rest of my life. I don't care who puts that on me or does it. Yes. But I know what the original Usos were like. Okay. You know, so I can definitely respect the older chain. The new chain, they got they got a lot of things to look at in themselves. They have a lot of things to learn. Um, but I think everybody's a Uso anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? You your Uso too. Don't, don't lie, nigga. Oh, actually, you know, <laughs> you know I'm plugged in. Uso <laughs> for life, man. Uso for life, my nigga. Um, now, this is one of the, the last couple questions I want to ask you. Sure. You've evolved from a child to a man with the master hand. What, are you, what is your biggest dream currently for yourself, your family, and then just being someone who's a car builder? What, do you, what, what, do you, what, what are your long-term goals for your brand? I think ultimately for me to represent everything that I've been doing in a bigger platform, yes. that's one of my dreams. I think to actually fully put all my work out in one place okay. and to see it kind of like grow up like trees, you know? Yes. I think that's my goal. Not so much the finance part. There's a lot of people that like, want to go there. They yes. how much money you're making it. Look, man, I don't even talk about finance. Most, with most of my customers, you got me to talk about finance. Yeah. That's the weirdest part about this whole thing. So for my family and me, I want to see this art continue to grow. I want to see this bike in 20 years. Gotcha. I want to see that in 20 years. I want to see everything that I've done in the past 10 years, whatever it is, I want to see everything that I've been working on continue to flourish and continue to represent. Yeah. So, I mean, with that, you know, I, I plan on being around a long time. Um, I, I plan on being in a good position to continue to put out good art and definitely good creative uh, style. But I think it also takes people to actually support the style, yeah. you know, in the way of life. So, uh, for as long as I'm here, man, I'm definitely going to be here for the people, for what they want, but I'm also going to be here for what I want. Absolutely. You know, and that's, I think that hand in hand has to be a relationship because... You know, if, if you can't fulfill my dreams, how am I going to fulfill yours? Yes. You know, I think it's a hand in hand. And um, guys like us, yourself, yes. uh, I definitely, you know, I commend you on what you're doing right now. Well, thank you. He would have done TV to me is, is going to definitely be the next thing that everybody's going to be like Vlad TV. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Vlad. So y'all see that? Get my man, get him his check, though. You know yes. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. But, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with what's going on in the industry, and I think um, this is a moment that you needed. Yes. Uh, I definitely reference a part two of this. Yes. There's definitely a lot more to this game than what I put out. I'll give y'all some gems. Don't, don't take that for granted. You yes. know what I'm saying? Just, just listen to it, read it. I don't care what you do with it. Put it in parables, sign language, whatever you want to do with this information, you can do it. I'm just giving you what my gems are. I'm not perfect. I'm a flawed man, just like everyone else. But at the same time, I mean well. Yes. You know, everybody I ever cross, they always tell you what I did to them, not for them. Mm. And I've always told you that. Absolutely. You know, they'll never tell you, hey, Matt looked out for me, or he went this way, he went that way. There's always what he did to me, what he did to me. He poked me, he poked me. Mm -hmm. No. I'm, I'm everything. I'm a painter, custom car builder, entrepreneur. You name it, and I'm proud of it. Yes. You know, and am I going to continue to learn? For sure. And am I going to continue to represent my family and what we do? For sure, on a positive scale. On, on a positive scale. No negativity coming from my camp. So if everybody think that you know they can sit on Instagram and read and read through pictures. You got an issue? Call me. You got a question? Call me. I'm out to help everybody in this game because I believe this game needs help. Yes. It needs help from guys like you, mm. me, and all the other OGs that come along on this. Deeper Dawn tour because right now I feel like you're on a mission, man. I feel like I feel this mission. You know what I'm saying? I, I really am. Yeah. My Instagram, two Instagram accounts, okay? Custom Culture Classes at Instagram, and there's Lugos Designs Unlimited at Instagram. You can hit me at both of them, um, and also CustomCultureClasses.com, uh, full of information. That's an information, uh, I guess you could say, page. It's going to give you everything that I've been teaching to show you what people have learned in a period of two days. Out to all my New York cats. I'll definitely see a part two of this. Um, you know, again, shout out to all the OGs that are going to come along after this interview. Don't be afraid to speak out. That's what it's about. Debo to Don TV. That's what's up. Are you listening? Damn. Damn. Are you listening? Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.